the great Pitts and Erling debate of 2025 continues. Yes. Uh, we got a lot of amazing questions in our last short, so mm -hmm. we're, we're going to address some. First of all, Danny, yeah. if Pitts and Erling actually worked, why? Why hasn't someone done a study or proven this or done like a side by side, like one engine with, one engine without? Why aren't there horsepower numbers to prove? that this is Well, true. there actually is a dyno number out there. There's a video out there of a NASCAR engine finishing a 250 mile race, making eight horsepower with a knurled piston. Eight it, horsepower more, more Yes. with a knurled piston. Yes, Brian Salter racing engines. And he came out of retirement to do this video because he actually called in Uncle Tony and said, hey, I've done this video. Everybody's asking, you know, where's the dyno numbers? There is dyno numbers, and he was surprised. In his scenario, the piston came in 10,000 too small. The piston came in 10,000s yes. too small. They only small. got nine days from the time an engine comes in to freshen it up, and out the door it goes. They dyno every single engine, um, making 600 and some horsepower with a 390 CFM four barrel. This is the NASCAR engine, and they always hit the same number. I mean, within, within a point. They just, you know, that's how they know that there's something wrong. So, hit the same number every time. All of a sudden, this engine made eight horsepower more. And it's like, what What the heck? So here's the deal. They had the block already ready. The pistons come in. It's go time. And they're 10,000s too small. Okay. He calls up Smokey. Smokey suggests none of the piston. He's done it before. Now, here is the deal. We, me, I'm not saying anything about anything else because you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. We would never knurl the piston that's 10,000s too small. Got it. The reason knurling got a bad rap and this is the same with valve guides. And it's go, oh, another controversy. This guy does valve guides too. Oh, it's cool. <laughs> it's because people knurl things they shouldn't be knurling. Right, 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 and right. And throughout right. the years, stuff didn't work because you, you knurled something that was too loose. No, yeah. So I'm seeing it's like it's it's like a band-aid on a, on a problem, right? You, sh you the, the right, the correct way to solve the issue would have been get the proper pistons. But sure. in this case, you don't have you don't have the time. No, these are You're, custom pistons that are made. These are off the shelf pistons, and that's you got a race. Order. You got a race. Yeah. Yeah. So he made eight horsepower more. And then he actually, you know, you don't have time to even figure it out. So they went ahead and sent it out. It finished the race. No problems. Um, finished second place in the race. Oh, wow. So, now, <laughs> after the race, they teared the engines down. Yeah. He noticed they had a lot of oil in the cylinder. So by the end of the race, it had lost its its advantage. But uh, he finished the race. Yep. And and it, it made more more power. It did. So the myth about it, bull, it doesn't work, and it doesn't make more power. It did. Okay. Can you imagine if you would have done that to a piston that's only five thousand to loose? And here's the deal. Why did it make more horsepower? It stabilized the piston, which helped the ring seal. That made the power. But here's the deal: the engines, all the other engines he did before had the perfect piston and the perfect bore. Where did the eight horsepower come from? If it stabilized the piston, well, a new piston stabilized the piston too. Exactly. So there's something else to this. If it made eight horsepower, because if the knurling would have stabilized the piston, it would have made identical horsepower as the other engines. Didn't last as long, but I was able to go race. The key here is that it made eight horsepower more. Right. It shouldn't have made more. It should have made the same that all- Exactly. Brand new pistons, brand new everything made. It should have made the same. Right. Right, two more questions mm -hmm. that were really good that we also got. Isn't that damaging the cylinder wall? Isn't the knurling, aren't those raised sections going to destroy the cylinder wall? This has been done since the beginning of time in our world. You know, I know people don't, you know, the young, young crowd don't know, but this has been going on for many, 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 many years, okay? Why would manufacturers even make a knurler if they, after they did it, it didn't work? And why throughout these years has it been used so often if it ruined a cylinder? If it ruined a cylinder, knurlers have been junked a long time ago. That's a very common question yes, though. I saw was. that one all over the place. And there's more to it. Maybe there needs to be a follow-up actual video of how do you knurl a piston? What's the proper way to knurl? Because you can do it wrong and have these bad experiences. But I've been doing this since the 70s and I have never ever seen an engine that we pulled back apart. And this is on a race motor because we freshen those up once a year. Right that has any cylinder wear. It holds oil in those little grooves. And that, which was, and, yes, and which it, was another question is how does it work? It, it stabilizes the piston and the bore. And then I believe that the knurling holds oil. Holds so oil. I think that's the key. Got is, it. Is that it holds oil, which allows you to run that tight clearance. Right. And there's a lot of controversy from engineers. Mm. Oh, you're not an engineer, so you don't know. And the controversy is that a piston skirt never touches the cylinder wall, ever. Huh. And and it's like, well, only in startup. And I'm like, well, 
I start my car up every day. So, uh, you know, only start, oh, so only once or twice a day? It's kind of a silly argument there, but no. But in theory, well, in theory, a lot of things don't happen in theory. But in the real world, the piston wall does touch the skirt. If you pull apart enough engines, even coated pistons, why is the coating removed off the side of the piston where it wears? Why are the skirts worn? It never touched, right? So the neural allows it to hold oil, which is the barrier in between the piston and the cylinder wall. Yep. So that extra oil there, I think it's what makes it so slick and made the extra power. Right. But yeah, yes, it stabilizes the bore, but there's something more to it. But it's the ability to hold the oil in those neurals. The little spikes are gone when you fit the piston in with the file. I think that's the key. What's actually making it work. Like I said, it was designed just to take up the slack on an older motor. It actually worked because they wouldn't keep doing it. They wouldn't have done it for so many years. Like I said, I've never seen a neural piston fail. It has its place. Right. It's not to replace a real piston, but it did make power. So another question that I saw was, if it's such a good technique, Danny, why is it not being used today? Why aren't all the OEMs knurling the pistons in every single engine that rolls off the showroom floor? You don't really see it in modern engines. Well, now we have of, coatings. Because of piston design. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, have, we have coatings yeah. now. I mean, we, and that's another thing. This isn't, don't take this like, I'm going to buy a brand new set of pistons and instead of sending them out to get coated, I'm going to knurl them. No, <laughs> get them coated. A, they're probably going to come coated if they're a Awesome set of pistons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So no, we have we have stuff now these days that do the same thing that they just did back then. We don't need to turn our back on old school. A lot of the older people are dying anyway, so it's going to be lost anyway. So it's kind of a neat thing, and maybe that's why. So right now, what knurling because the, the old people are, are now remembering it. Wow, and then young people are you know. Or what the heck is this? So we just brought yeah, it back into it's... light, and who knows if somebody may make a brand new piston knurling now. I bet you piston <laughs> knurling prices are going to go up now on eBay. So. <laughs> It, that, it would be interesting to, to take that test even further. We now know that the dyno numbers show it did make a more horsepower, but we never even got into why. Why? Yeah. So there's some there's something there. There's something kind of cool. It's like the, those TV shows. Could, could it be? Is it possible? <laughs> I mean, somehow it made more horsepower. Yeah. You know. But we don't really know why. No. Or how. Like I said, I, yeah. I knew that, that like when I think about it, it it, it stabilizes the piston. Legit. Better ring gap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. this NASCAR sure, engine. These, these NASCAR engines already had the best pistons with the best ring end gap. Right. So it should have just made the same horsepower. Right. Not more. Yeah. And no one is picking up on that. Why did it make more? All right. There we go. Why did it make more? Well, shoot, I think, okay. that's, I think that covers the main questions that I kept seeing over and over and over again in the comments. So do you have the piston knurler somewhere readily available? Yes, is it's it? sitting right over there. All right, not to brag, you guys, but my life is pretty awesome. After we finished addressing the main questions that y'all had for us in this Q&A video, Danny uncovered his piston knurler that used to belong to Smokey Eunuch, and he gave me a quick lesson and demonstration on a junk piston, and then let me try my hand at knurling it myself. Man, what a cool experience. This was seriously such an honor to be able to learn this old school machinist trick from Danny, as well as actually put my hands on one of Smokey's pieces of equipment. Of course, there's a lot that goes into knurling a piston, and this machine required a lot of manual inputs. I set the depth of the knurls manually, and I moved the knurling bit across the skirt of the piston manually. I actually think this came out pretty good for my first time. But of course, you set the depth of the knurls for a specific application, which we really didn't have one here. Now, after this, there's also a process to filing and fitting the piston, but that's another topic for another time. I definitely have a lot more to learn, but I do have an older, worn-out engine that could use a refresh, and I'm now really curious to give it a try for myself. I did film this entire lesson, so if this is something that you are curious about and you'd like to see a full-length video of Danny teaching me this technique, then let me know in the comments, and maybe I can make that happen for you guys. Man, thank you so much for taking the time to answer all of those, because oh. I certainly didn't know them. And thank oh, you for bringing it out and letting people <laughs> discuss this. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and bring old school stuff to uh, to the new generation yeah. here on uh, on the social medias. Well, thanks, Sadie. I will link your channel down in the description below, and I will also try to find that video. And I will link that video of the eight horsepower gain in the yes. description below. So we'll, we'll find it. But thank you so much for watching, and um, we will see you in our next video. Bye.